am Hazel Gomes. Welcome to the Marine Etuta channel. In our previous video, we discussed how to prepare a CV and a resume. In today's video, we are going to pre-discuss the details of how you're going to prepare yourself for the interview that you get called in for after your CV and your resume has received appreciation. The first thing that you need to do when you are preparing for the interview is to be clear about certain questions that you are certain that the company is going to be asking you during the interview. Before you reach the venue for your interview, it is very important that you have done your homework. This means that you have to interview before the interview, you have to ask some questions from the beginning. Because it is almost certain that panelists are going to ask these questions. And if they don't ask these questions, you will be able to reply to the other questions. Or the way you present your opinion and thoughts will reflect how well you have prepared these questions. So the very first question that you need to prepare is about the company that is taking your interview. So you need to have studied the company that you are going to be interviewed for. The first thing about the company would be their motto. Almost every company has a logo and a slogan or what they call their motto as to why they do what they do. So you need to have learned this by heart. And along with the motto, they're functioning based on it would be of importance. So what the company does and how that is the method that they use for conducting their business or their enterprise would be something that you need to look into. So once you have understood the motto and the functioning, the next thing that you need to research about this company is its history. And by this, I don't mean how the company happened to be formed. If you look at that, if it's interesting, you can add it as an information that you did look up. But by saying the history of the company, what I mean is their success, or their failure in few of the past ventures that they have undertaken. So how did they conduct the business? or go about with their work and to what extent did it prove successful or where were the drawbacks that the company faced in their past term would be something that you need to look into. You might also want to study about the collaborators, the co-partners and the joint ventures that the company has undertaken. Usually companies in specific projects would involve certain specific groups or people that they think would have added qualities or provide additional benefits to that project. They also would have ties with certain individuals or groups that they would call niche. And the ties with these people would benefit the company in not just PR decisions and projects, but also adds as an added incentive to the company. You need to think about how they benefit the people of the company and analyze how the projects were successful because of the contribution of the individuals involved. Now the reason you should be going into so much details or studying their involvement is because sometimes the decisions that the company makes might have certain loopholes which is very hard to identify and if by chance you are able to identify the loophole that is how the company could have made a better decision or where the company made a mistake or a slight 
tilt in their project decision or how the project could have had been better with involvement of certain people or by not involving certain people. If you are able to find those loopholes and able to explain to the panelists why it is a mistake and how it is a mistake, also how it could be fixed, then it shows not just how good you are at analyzing and providing information to the company for their benefit in further projects, but also how you as an individual have the potential to be able to benefit the company and help it improve. When they see such valuable potential and quality in an individual, they would necessarily be inclined to hire you. So it's like a brownie point. Now, usually, even though most of the time we join a company or we take up a job for the pay scale or for the benefits that the company provides us. But what the company actually wants to see is something that is more than less that. So they want to feel that their company is not just providing the basics, but providing something that would elevate its meaning and value, sometimes usually philosophical. So you need to prove to the company that it's not just because the company is providing the basic amenities, but also because it is advancing you as an individual and the value that you as an individual have for the society as a whole. So it's something like a barter system. You are providing benefits to the company, but you are expecting to get the same amount of benefits from the company. So you need to explain to the company how this very particular company is your pathway to a successful career. So this is the second and the most specifically detailed question that you need to have studied and analyzed and have a very clear perspective before you go for the interview. That is, what is your career goal? That is your aim and how you aim to achieve it. I hope this video will help you pre-prepare for your interview and in the next video we will prepare ourselves for the final interview day. See you next time. Bye bye.